A war is unfolding, not with bullets, but with invisible waves. Afternoon of the 16th of July, 2025, as Damascus buzzed with rush hour traffic, a thunderous explosion shook the entire Syrian capital to its core. In just seven minutes, Syria's Defense Ministry headquarters, the strongest military command center in Damascus, was completely penetrated by smart missiles from Israeli stealth aircraft. This wasn't just another airstrike. This was the moment F-35-1. A deer proved that no defense system on Earth can stop fifth-generation stealth technology. But the sweeter rescue from early morning was just the opening act. The real test of Israeli air power came that same afternoon when F-35I stealth fighters attempted something unprecedented. How could aircraft worth $100 million each penetrate the heart of Syria's capital in broad daylight without a single radar detecting them? Following the successful thunderstorm operation at Suida, where UAVs, F-16S, and F-15 is saved 45,000 Druze in 48 hours, Israel faced a new challenge. Damascus was mobilizing reinforcements and threatening retaliation. Syrian command centers were coordinating a counter-offensive to avenge the Sweda humiliation. Unlike the Sweda operation that relied on UAV swarms and conventional fighters, Damascus would require something special. Aircraft that could penetrate the most heavily defended airspace in Syria without being detected. But Damascus wasn't Sweda. Syria's capital was protected by the most sophisticated air defense network Russia had ever installed in the Middle East. But why did Israel decide to escalate from Sweda to Syria's capital Damascus itself? The answer lies in the alarm signals. Israeli intelligence picked up just hours after Sweda's success. Afternoon of the 16th of July, 2025. Just hours after Sweda was secured. Israeli SIGINT intercepted alarming communications from Damascus. Syria's transitional government was mobilizing two mechanized battalions from Aleppo and Damascus suburbs with orders to completely control the Sueda area and eliminate the threat permanently. More critically, intercepts revealed Syria was preparing to use heavy artillery and aircraft to execute a large-scale revenge attack against Druze villages. Syria's defense ministry headquarters was operating as the nerve center with continuous encrypted communications to field commanders about Operation Damascus Revenge. Intelligence showed Syrian commanders believed Israel wouldn't dare attack the capital, making Damascus the perfect target for decisive action. Prime Minister Netanyahu convened an emergency security cabinet meeting Right at noon, if Syria wants to escalate with a large-scale revenge attack, we'll eliminate their ability to command such operations. The decision was made within two hours. Syria's defense ministry headquarters, the strongest command center, had to be neutralized. But how to strike the most heavily defended target in Syria's capital while maintaining plausible deniability? With the defense ministry protected by multiple layers of S, 300S, Panzer S, 1S, and urban air defenses. What weapon did Israel need to penetrate Damascus without triggering an international crisis? The answer had a name. F-35 won Adir, the $100 million stealth warrior. But to strike Damascus's heart in broad daylight, Israel needed the perfect plan. 1 p.m the 16th of July, at the classified Eder Squadron facility at Nevitim Air Base. Four F-35I, Lightning II aircraft, underwent afternoon mission preparations. Unlike the multi-aircraft waves used at Sweda that morning, Damascus would require surgical precision. A small force of stealth fighters operating independently in daylight. Each F-35I was loaded with four GBU, 39 small diameter bombs inside the weapons bay to maintain stealth characteristics plus advanced electronic warfare suites. The mission plan exploited F-35I's unique capabilities, radar cross-section, 
smaller than a golf ball, integrated sensor systems, and electronic warfare, modified by Israel. Most critically, F-35I pilots would operate in absolute silence mode, no external communications, no radar emissions, relying entirely on passive sensors. Within just 20 minutes, four stealth ghosts were ready to launch. Mission. Penetrate Damascus's heart without a single radar detection. But would reality be as simple as the plan? Could four F-35I stealth fighters, operating completely alone, overcome the massive air defense network, protecting Syria's capital? 3 p.m. Zero hour had arrived. Four F-35Is took off in silence, heading straight for Damascus's heart. This would be the ultimate test of fifth-generation stealth technology. 3 p.m., the 16th of July, Operation Damascus Thunder began with Swiss clockwork precision. Four F-35 Iadir aircraft departed Nevitim in complete radio silence, flying at 25,000 feet, maintaining 5 kilometers formation separation, using terrain following radar and pre-programmed flight paths, they approached Damascus from the southwest, an unexpected vector exploiting gaps in Syrian radar coverage. At 3.35 p.m., F-35 is descended to 15,000 feet, 40 kilometers from Damascus, beginning their attack run. Syrian S-300 and Pansier S-1 systems remain completely unaware of the approaching threat. At 3.42 p.m., Lead F-35I established visual contact with the Defense Ministry building and began target designation. The attack commenced at exactly 3.44 p.m. All four aircraft simultaneously released guided GBU-39 munitions from 15 kilometers range, 16 small diameter bombs each weighing 113 kilograms, struck the Defense Ministry headquarters with surgical precision. In seven minutes, Damascus witnessed the absolute power of fifth-generation stealth technology. Not one radar detected them, not one missile was fired. And this led to an inescapable conclusion. F-35I didn't just evade Syrian air defenses. It made them completely invisible. After proving absolute stealth superiority, how would this F-35I success change the regional balance of power? Within hours, the entire world realized they had just witnessed a historic turning point in air warfare. Within hours of the Damascus strike, international military analysts called it the most successful stealth operation in modern warfare history. Satellite imagery confirmed surgical precision. The Defense Ministry headquarters showed massive internal damage while surrounding civilian structures remained untouched. Russia's reaction was telling. Despite providing Syria's air defenses, Moscow issued only diplomatic protests without offering military assistance. Iran similarly limited its response to verbal condemnation, revealing the psychological impact of Israel's demonstrated stealth capabilities. Syria's transitional government immediately retracted all threats against the Druze community, with officials privately admitting they had underestimated Israeli technological superiority. Most importantly, other regional powers began reassessing their own air defense capabilities, realizing that traditional radar-based systems were completely obsolete. Final tally, Syria lost 70% command capability, Russia lost air defense credibility, Iran lost a strategic ally, and Israel, Israel proved they own Middle Eastern skies. In 48 historic hours, Israel proved one thing beyond doubt, modern air warfare has three tiers of power. Kamikaze UAVs clearing the path, conventional fighters closing in for destruction, and stealth aircraft 
delivering the killing blow. The F-35-1 Adir accomplished the impossible. Not just slipping past Syrian air defenses, but making them virtually non-existent. When a single $100 million aircraft can paralyze a billion-dollar defense network, then traditional air defense concepts need a complete rewrite. Syria learned the hard way that messing with Israel's allies means playing with fire. Iran and Hezbollah witnessed firsthand a technology gap they can't bridge. Russia watched their most advanced weapons become museum pieces. The message couldn't be clearer. Middle Eastern skies belong to Israel. What impressed you more? The lightning, UAV swarm at Sueda, or the ghost-like penetration of F-35I over Damascus? And here's the big question. Which nation will be next to acquire stealth technology capable of challenging this dominance? Drop your thoughts below. We'll dive deep into analysis in our upcoming video. Israel just rewrote the playbook of global air warfare. And this is only chapter one. Hit subscribe now to stay locked in on military tech secrets, shaping the world's destiny. But beyond the explosions and radar blackouts, lies something far more important. A shift in doctrine. For decades, nations focused on defending their skies now. They must rethink how to survive without ever being seen. In the era of fifth-generation warfare, air dominance isn't just about speed or firepower. It's about first-strike invisibility, information warfare, and platform synergy. Israel didn't just neutralize Syria's command center. They unveiled a new reality where a single stealth squadron, backed by real-time intelligence, can shape the outcome of an entire war theater. The question now is, who's next to adapt? And who will fall behind? Because in 2025, wars aren't just won by soldiers. They're decided by ghosts in the sky. 